Ida. <laughs> it's again early morning for you. <laughs> Too early morning. And let's welcome Aida for her uh, fourth lecture on uh, symmetries in infinite settings and some regular languages as well. So let's uh, have Aida. So, so Aida, it's up over to you. Thank you. Yeah, good. Um, not good morning. It's good day to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Uh, I'll, so the last lecture will be, we will finish the story of regular languages, uh, like contribution of regular languages to uh, asymptotic phenomena in algebra. So last time we were talking about uh, how to record quantitative data for infinitely many algebraic objects simultaneously. And we ended up with this definition of the equivalent Hilbert series. So in particular, we were focusing, since we usually work with ideals that are homogeneous, um, we, if we go in the algebra side, we end up with like algebras that are generated by, um, that have generators of the same degree. So I'm like restating our problem more focused to this setting. So given a family of uh, related algebras a n for n is in like n to the m so it's like we have a change in m directions um, and suppose that this each of these a n's is generated by degree k monomials then we can record the number of for each a n the number of uh, monomials of degree d times k since the degrees of monomials in a, each a n are like multiples of k's um, for um, in this series, so it's um, so the variable t records the the degree, and s one through s m record the slice where we are each which of these a n's, and. Um, this part here, in fact, this is just the Hilbert series of the each of ANs. So we are summing over the Hilbert series of uh, AN for each AN in these families of algebras. And the question is, the first question is, when is this rational? So we have more than one variable, so we don't have rationality by default. And when it is rational, compute when it is possible, compute um, yeah. a over <clears throat> Here k is uh, the sum of n i's. Uh, k what is k? Uh, k is here. Sum of binomials. So, no, no. so in the, in the, I mean, in uh, the case, the, I uh, think that's relation with n i's as well. Uh, k with n i's, n1 through n m, also in n. Um, k uh, is degree k monomials. Uh, sorry, k is, uh, yeah, it's the yes, sum of n i's. k is not the sum of n i's. Not sum of n i's. No, no, no. n i's are, so n here is n to the m. So n itself is n1 through n m. So oh, okay. what will be the value are, of d you plus? You are fixing here a set a, which is just generated by degree k monomials. A is a is a is a hmm. is a collection of algebras. Okay, okay, got it, got mm -hmm. it. And each a n is included in some R n. Mm -hmm. And what will be the sum of n one plus n m? It should be k. N one plus n m? No. no. Um, uh, n one plus n m like n i's go to infinity. So n1 plus yeah. m goes to infinity, but k is like, let's, okay, so maybe, so one example that I will mention throughout this, uh, this talk a lot is, so let's consider this algebra, a n to be generated by k of uh, x0, x1, x, um, uh, let me write it. Uh, uh, it's generated by x i square x i x i plus one for um, 
um, i less or equal to n. So this is what uh, a, so we have only one here. Um, m is equal to one in this case. So this is one example. Another example is let's call a n one and two. So a n is k of let's say is um, x i times y j or i less or equal to n one and j less or equal to n two. Um, and um, so and um, this fancy a is the collection of a n's. So in in this case is n one and two because n here is n one and two or n one n two n. So it can be any like increases and n increase. And uh, um and k in both these cases k is equal to two because it's the is the degree of each of these generators. Okay, thank you. So k is the degree of each of the generators, and n is like what is the largest index we see in AN. It means that uh, every monomial should have same degree. So we cannot have xi, xi plus one, xi plus two here. So that's what, uh, or we can have all of them degree three, but I'm taking this convention that they are all of the same degree. The definition works even if we don't have the same degree, but um, yeah, it, it works well. I'm just, everything I'm gonna do is on the same degree in this talk because all the results are on the same degree. And uh, yeah, hmm. and okay. because it, yeah, if, it's a uh, homogeneous ideal case. So if I will look that definition at this moment, equivariant Helbert series. So this means that NIs are not depending on any index with D. No. No. So yeah. I can take, yeah. take this sum separate. Yes. All this uh, run through this uh, span here. Of... So, so, so these are independent sums and you are taking the product. The product? Um, yeah, I can take it out to mm. the NIs or DI separately, and then I can take out uh, separately the sums over NIs. I, got, I think, can, can you please highlight what is this K here standing for? I think for? there should be some connection. So, I, sh I again, I believe that N, N1 plus NM, uh, the summation should be equal to K. No, K is equal to 2 in this case, as I say. Why N1 plus N2 should be, like... Let's say we have A3. A3 mm -hmm. is going to have, so um, yeah. So we have okay. A. For example, if you will just consider the example A at this moment, and if you will write their uh, equivalent Hilbert series, then what will be that one? So it is just the product of two sums. <laughs> Which one? No, this is always an infinite sum. Infinite sum D for any option of D for any options of N Ni's we have an expression. So oh, it's an okay. infinite sum. It's a sum in variables T, S1 through SM, like in, it's an infinite sum. Oh, for every value of D, right? For every value of D and for every value of N1 through NM. So it's, we had the Hilbert, for each N, we have the Hilbert series of AN, which is an infinite sum on its own. And then we take the sum over the Hilbert series of each AN. In uh, example B, shouldn't uh, X I square and Y I square should also be included in AN1 and 2? This is just X I times Y I. And uh, i is less or equal to n1, I'm saying. j is less or equal. To... So xi times yj, sorry. So how I... are you defining these a, n's, and n belongs to uh, natural uh, numbers power m? And how are you defining these a, n's, like in a example a and b? 
Uh, these come from different places. For instance, the second one here, mm -hmm. let me erase this. This arrives as, um, so if we remember the other time, so for B here, if we remember the other time, we were talking about X, N1 times N2, like this. This is a matrix X11, X21, X12, X1, N2, X, N1, 1, and so on, X, N1, N2. And uh, if we take the 2 by 2 minors we said of this matrix X, N1 times N2, and we take the ideal, this ideal, mm -hmm. this ideal we said, yeah, it's generated by 2 by 2 minors, but this also is the kernel of phi n1 and 2, where phi n1 and 2 is the map from k of x i j or i less or equal to n1, j less or equal to n2, to k of y, i, maybe I should have called them y's and z's here, but, or, yeah, y, i, or let me make a one tiny, tiny change. I'm going to call this z, just so it really matches with everything there. So Z11 and so on, Z and 1, 1, Z1 and 2 here, Z12, Z21, Z and 1 and 2, and Z. And so here we, just so I can use here X's and Y's, but yeah. oh. let me write for short. Okay, so it's going to be um, k of x n1 times n2. So all these variables, x, i, j. Oh, again, I wrote x. Sorry. Let's see here. 2 k of x n1 y n2 such that z, i, j is mapped to the x, i times y, j. So if we, so the kernel, so these two by two minors are the kernel of this map and the image of this P N one and two is exactly A N one and two. I think uh, you should proceed with the, with the result stating the quotient, the rational function now, the question you were going to address. Oh, um, whether this function is rational or not, equivalent Hilbert series now. Do we understand what the object is? Yeah, 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 yeah I got yeah, it. Got it. Okay, so that's the motivation where this problem comes from. And why I'm considering them of all of the same degree, say some k, is because usually the map phi is homogeneous and the image usually, like uh, I'm considering maps, monomial maps and they are homogeneous and um, homogeneous meaning each generator is of the same degree. So that's uh, the story of that. Okay, so and here so we said when is this irrational and when it is irrational compute compute this rational form when possible and deduce um, other information for, um, for this family out of the rational form of uh, the equivalent Hilbert series. So kind of this is the task. And we said that 
um, yeah, so the the point was that one. And then we, we talked about, we said that we have given an alphabet. We took this sigma star, the uh, set of all the finite strings or words made of of uh, letters in sigma. And we said that a subset L of this sigma star is a regular, is a regular language. If it is the output of a finite automata. A finite automata and um yeah and we gave so one example and uh yeah so so one example i'm going to change it slightly from the other time start one two three i'm going to call this alpha tau tau and um so this is an example and um we can put, we said about the weight functions. On languages. On languages. Oh, I always. L. So for instance, we, we, we can take weight function rho of alpha to be S, rho of tau, to be t, and then a rho, this extends multiplicatively, rho of alpha, tau, to the um, tau, 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 k times, this becomes s times t to the k, things like this. And we also said that the main theorem here was that uh, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to say. And so now the connection with the previous part was that we have this generating function L rho of, uh, in this case, Ts, which is the sum of the weights of the words for every word in the language. And in this case, this is gonna be, so I changed slightly, I gave also one to be an accepting state. So our, L here will have the empty word because it's accepted here and all alpha tau to the K or K greater or equal to one. And so this, um, if we take the sum of all over all of them is gonna be empty word has weight one. And so it's one plus the rest is sum k greater or equal to one, um, s times t to the k. So this is a geometric series. So it's one plus s t over uh, one minus t. Uh, and this rational. And so the theorem here was that all regular languages produce Um, rational or uh, uh, rational generating functions. And the aim of the kind of uh, of our problem is so given our a equal to a n or n to the n to the m construct a language L um, and uh, a weight rho such that our equivariant Hilbert series of A is equal to the power series of L rho. And this, uh, yeah, and important is that this is a regular. Okay. And um, the literature says that the finite automata recognizing 
L um, is enough to compute to do X splits for for explicit computations. And I'll uh, in the tutorial I'll say how we use the finite automata to to really compute the this rational form, but okay. So something um, I gave one definition of a language um, in that that form. Excuse okay. me. Um, yes. Can you just give a remark about how we see the theorem uh, that you just stated about uh, the generating function being rational? This one, I will uh, uh, not, so I'll give you the reference, but basically the idea is that you can, um, yeah, I can give one I, one kind of a sketch is if you have a regular language, so that means that you have an, a finite automaton associated to it. And one proof is to like use that to like explicitly, you say, hey, you explicitly compute the language out of that automaton. So the the one proof is very like constructive, like you, it tells you how to explicitly compute the the um, the rational form. But uh, I will not say more on that because that's not a yes, it's not an algebraic proof, and it's yeah, I'm giving a reference, and I I kind of want to give a different message in for this one hour. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, the idea, so kind of with Uwe, what we propose is for this algebra is the following. So here is a, okay, so a recipe on how to con to, to proceed for, with these things. So suppose, so that, so take, <laughs> A to be like the limit, the co-limit of this A n or n to the um, goes to infinity. Remember n is now like uh, some n one through n m. Okay, and now, okay, so let uh, let's say um, let um, G be. Uh, I'm gonna call it G one. Or let me, and I'm gonna, yeah, G one through G R be um, minimal generating set up to our. I'm gonna call it G to the M action or G uh, yeah, G. Um, yeah, g to the m. What this means that for each of n i, there is a group action or there is an action acting on it. And there are m of them because there are m directions. Okay, and remember here, r is less than infinity. This is very important. So we have a finite minimal generating set up to our like um, action. And um, so we have r of them, okay? And so, so this is, let me, so this is uh, step one. So step two is, um, so um, associate, so, so take, letter alpha i for each gi and then take letter tau i for each g for each group here or for for each um kind of uh, yeah group action and so our sigma will be our alphabet, will be alpha in this case, alpha one through alpha r, tau one through tau m. 
Okay, so that's where we start. We want to construct a language at the end. So this is where the alphabet, this is one alternative. You take this alphabet. And then, so we have this sigma star, which are all the possible words, okay? And then find or, yeah, oh yeah, or restrict. That's a better word. Restrict to some L in the sigma stars such that L, I'm going to call this N, which is all words in L that use exactly N I of tau I letters. such that this one is uh, uh, is in bijection with the monomials in an and this is like the key in general and when proving this is the key to prove that the if we restrict l to like we we uh, we decide l and then with if we if we're considering this l n that is all words in l that is exactly n i of tau i so n1 tau 1 and 2 tau 2 and so on then this set should be in bijection with the monomials being used in a n okay and then um consider oh yeah so excuse me what number were we yes so i so this is three oh. this was three Four. Okay, so consider take rho as predicted. So take rho, um, the weight function, such that rho of each of these alpha i's uh, is t, and rho of tau one or uh, tau i is si of tau. For i here 1 through m. And why this makes sense? So alpha i was for the generator. So it like corresponding to a mon it corresponded to a monomial. That's why we 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 give this t where because t did even the definition here. Where are we? Here in the definition t was uh, the the power of t had to do with the, the degree of the monomials d times k one can also choose to take this to be um like um t to the power d if we want uh, sorry t to the power k but t is fine it's just uh, yeah the rationality results is still the same so one can choose to take the to take this t to the power k as I said, the rationality results are the same. We just substitute t with t to the k even at the end. Okay, so we take this one. And then the rest is, uh, yeah. So the rest is of the five is make sure that L is a regular. So if you have done all of this, I claim that you are fine because now this part three, so then, so the part three said that ln is isomorphic to these monomials of an, but now each word in ln, by the way, how we defined the weight, will have exactly weight. So for every w in this ln a row of w i claim will be exactly something um will be um will be will have where are we and so tau i so, so it's going to be um s1 to the n1 and so on sn to the n sm to the nm times um the 
row of like whatever remains from like the town sorry from um from this um product let's say of alpha i's that are in alpha i in w but this is something that depends only on on t and so that means that exactly what this is happen what's happening here is that um the rest is really counting the hilbert series for for an and so if we take the sum over both sides so it's the sum over the um w sorry row of w row of w for W in um, Ln is the same as the what where are we? Yes, the number of monomials in An. Um, yeah, in total, and then if we take the sum now for every n greater or equal to zero, for every n i greater or equal to zero. And this is the same as the sum for ni greater or equal to zero. And now this becomes exactly P of L rho Ts. And this is the equivariant Hilbert series of A itself. Yes. And so, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, okay, uh, this isomorphism uh, holds for one case. Uh, so what about A, N1, N2? So in that case, uh, you are going to increase the word count there? A1, A2? A, N1, N2. Oh, but N, for me, every time, N is N1 through NM. And oh, when I okay. see greater than zero, each and I greater or equal to zero. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this is in general. It's very in general as a as an idea. That's why when we decided here, in this case, when it, we we determined the words, we said we have letters that correspond to generators and letters that correspond to different um, uh, kind of different growth directions. So uh, M uh, in Ln uh, Ni is just uh, counting the uh, frequency of tau appearing there, right? Uh, of tau i for each i, so not only tau one, so we have more. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly so, uh, so can, can you just exp uh, give some simple example of a word and how this uh, yes. ln is being computed? Yeah. Just. I will. I will. Yeah. It, I. 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 I'm not saying this is like a straightforward kind of thinking, but yeah. yes. So, one idea is I'm gonna take an example. And unfortunately, it has a lot of heavy notation. I think what, once one gets it, what's happening is easy, but it's like the notation is heavy to start with, very heavy. So let's take this A. I'm going to take it to be, um, in fact, I like this example with x0 square. Or let's call it xi square, xi, xi plus 1 for i less or equal to n. So I'm, I'm, in this case, I'm taking m equal to one for simplicity. But then, so our generating set has um, some, um, yeah, has x um, zero square. I'm starting from zero just, um, and x zero, x one. So I have two generators and I have one tau. So I take sigma to be alpha zero, alpha one and tau. So this will correspond to this one. And this one and tau corresponds to kind of the, the shifting here, this end. And so if I take, so I, I want a bijection between words in sigma, I, I want a map between so sigma star and the monomials in A. Oh, sorry, this is A and so A is the union of them, monomials in A. So let's take, so if I take alpha zero, 
alpha zero gets mapped to x zero square and alpha one gets mapped to x zero x one. Now tau alpha zero will get mapped to, so I have alpha zero x zero square and whenever I have a tau to the left of alpha zero, I will shift the index by one. So this will be x one square tau alpha one will be x1 x2 so it's gonna shift everything in this uh, generator and similarly so if i have let's say tau alpha zero tau tau alpha zero alpha one and let's put also another tau here at the end so this one will go where so when it is at the end it's kind of doing nothing um and um uh, Every tau that is to the left of each of alpha will kind of impact that uh, alpha. So alpha one corresponded, we said, to x zero x one, alpha zero x zero square, and x zero square. So this one will correspond to a to a monomial of uh, degree six. That is fully determined by the alphas. Okay. Uh, Okay, so this is a degree six monomial. And it has how many taus? One, two, three, four taus. So also a in A4, because there are four taus. And which monomial is going to be? It's going to be exactly... Uh, uh, X1, X1. So it's going to be... So this does nothing. Now, let's start with the one in the most left. So uh, this um, alpha zero has only one tau. So it's so going to be one square. there. And then, yeah. yes, this al X alpha zero has three of them. X2. So X3 square uh, because it has, uh, it has this one, this one, and this one. Uh, OK. The previous one will also attack on it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I thought only two. Okay. So, we need that. I'll say, yeah, we okay. need that. So this tau is uh, just an ink operator, right? Increasing operator. Just yeah, it's an operator. In. Yes, exactly. Ink it's operator. operator. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yes. And then we have alpha 1 here, x0, x1. Again, has three taus to the, its left. So it's going to be x3, x4. And this is the monomial, which lives in a4. And uh, what is the role of that tau which is appearing at the end? It yeah. is silent or? So the, yeah, it's a very good point. So in this case, it's because I started from zero. I need a, every word will end with a tau. But if I take the same thing I wrote, tau, alpha, zero, tau, tau, alpha, zero, alpha, one. one tau, and I add another tau. Like mm -hmm. it's the same monomial. This gives the same monomial, x1 square, x3 square, x3, x4. But now we live in A5. Even oh. though, like, this monomial does live in A5. It does not use x5. Ah, but it okay. The, the later the later tau is just increase the level in A. So uh, making well. it a directed so, yeah. system. Yeah, okay. So okay. the taus uh, at the end of Position. the world are uh for um like they don't yeah are for determining yeah, yeah 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 okay and in a n yeah got it got it thank you yeah, so uh, it's, there it's is a, there's a question there yeah because a4 is included in a5 and yeah, so on this is all a the monomials yeah. here exist but we need to count them every time so adding a tau makes sure that we are considering that monomial both in A4 and A5. There was a question in IBA. Okay. What uh, no, no, I get it when she explained in another yeah, example. Okay, 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 okay. But we still have some problems now. So, but, okay, so I hope, it, so the, okay, I'm happy we, we understand this, like why taus at the end. So the yeah, taus yeah, at the end yeah, are yeah, just yeah. making okay. sure in each slice we do con are considering the monomial, but still we, we have one problem that 
So I'm going to take something even uh, more simpler than this. So, so alpha zero, alpha one goes to, we said x zero square, x zero, x one, but also alpha one, alpha zero goes to x zero square, x zero, x one. What are we going to do with this? So, so we are double counting. So we were looking for bijections. But it's very clear that like if we consider all the possible words like and under the rule that we mentioned and uh, under this mapping, we do not have bijection. We do have surjection. Oh, and I have not proven that, but we do have guaranteed surjection. Every monomial can be represented by word, but different words. So we see here two different words go to the same monomial. They use the same number of tiles, in this case, zero tiles, but. So what do we do with that? So that's the idea of like, we restrict. We make sure to choose only one of these two. So we kind of use a convention that, hey, whenever alpha zero and alpha one appear next to each other, we are uh, gonna always choose the first one and not, and we will, uh, we don't like the second one. Okay, we will always write in the increasing order, right? Or yeah, for instance, in this case, but maybe I did not say, so. yeah, so so let's say the, the mapping from this sigma star to the monomials of A, I, I said it and I did not prove it, is surjective. And uh, kind of proving that this is surjective gives a big hint on how to go for these problems. That's why I want to mention it. So how do we do it? So remember now, what was A? A was generated by all this x0 square, x0, x1, so, uh, or xi square, xi, xi plus one, for i net. This is what A is. Okay, so all of them are degree two. Every monomial in A is a product of these generators. And um, now, so let's, um, Let's say, let's take a monomial in A. So like, so take, I'm, I'm going to take an explicit one, but I think it's going to give the idea. So take, let's say, x2 square, x1, x2, x4 square, x2, um, x3. Okay. And um, what should I do else? Uh, let's take also, yeah, so x1, x, yeah. Maybe this will work fine. Okay, so we take this one. This one lives in A because oh. it's a product of generators. Sure, sure. Now, the thing is, I can also take x1, x, uh, yes, x1. So I'm, I'm, so if I put this in, yeah, so x1, x2, x2. Oh, let me make a small change because I wanted something more like kind of to, po to, to yeah. point out where I want to go. So let me take, Alpha. I'm going to take x1, x2 again here. Uh, and I'm going to take this to be three. Um, oh, okay. Now you are going to write it in terms of alpha. And top. No, before, before, yeah, I can write it in terms of alpha. Yeah, how do I go in terms of alpha without a rule? So if okay. I naively just put this like, hey, tau, yeah. like tau, uh, tau alpha zero. Alpha zero, okay. But, tau uh, alpha one and tau to the third. Or, of alpha zero. Tau, 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 alpha zero and tau, alpha one. I claim this is not good. Not good because uh, everything is counted toward the end. So yeah, have so to, I yeah. claim this is not good because look how many taus we created. Yeah. And that, yeah. So this is not good. So how do we deal with that? So I claim take take this, this monomial and uh, order Writing, each ascending. variable in the increasing order. Yes. Ascending order, so, yeah. Yes. So we take this one, and this is the same as writing x1, x1, x2, 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 x3, x3. So it's the same one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I claim when we do that, we always can rewrite this now as like again. Uh, as yeah. So 
I write it as x1 square, x2 square, x2 square, x3 square. Oh my God, yeah. So this ended up like this. And now, once we have done this, so now we can, every monomial, for every monomial, we can do this thing, put everything in increasing order. Then we call this the spring presentation of the monomial, a unique representation of this monomial. And once we have done this, then we can go to the words, which are against, uh, with, are also strings so from here so start this is right. alpha, yes alpha zero i need a tau because i started from zero so we just yeah um and then i need another tau for alpha zero tau alpha zero tau alpha zero okay and uh, last one is tau alpha one i think uh, uh, uh no tau just alpha one Oh yeah, because not the last X2, one. Because X2 square, X3 square is square. Yeah. So I yeah. have two alpha X squares. One. So it's going to be alpha zero, alpha zero, tau alpha zero. Because this oh, is- You write X everything X in terms of uh, alpha zero. Otherwise, alpha <laughs> one can work as well. For no, X2 alpha, square, one X2. Cannot, alpha one is not showing up because that's uh, it, it just happened by, by incidence. It happened. But, I have uh, one question. Yes. Uh, I didn't understand. Uh, yeah, you wrote tau of alpha naught. That I yeah, I am clear. But uh, x two square, so I can write it as tau of alpha one. Can I? No, 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 no. Alpha naught. Alpha naught is for x zero square, and yes. uh, alpha one is for x one, x two, x not x one, x not x one. Yeah, alpha one is for x not x one. X not yeah. x one. Now the thing is, we can always okay. write we can write this as x one x two. I'm saying and x one x two, but it's not good. I'm I'm, I'm yeah, claiming yeah, yeah, because yeah. Um, but uh, either the last one, the last two can be combined together. X two square, x three square can be viewed as uh, alpha one, and uh, the the, the, we'll the same, the same two tau. The... No, no. We, if we do that, then we will face another problem with a decision making. We need to make a decision at this point how to represent uh, every monomial uh, uniquely as a string. So if you are giving me an option and I'm giving you an option, we have to make a choice on which one to choose and mm -hmm. go with that. And okay. um, and I'm claiming that if we take this, like if we if we just go very naively, put everything in this increasing order, and then we just read two by two by two by two what the generators are, mm -hmm. then uh, it's going to tell us what, what happens. So now this happened that everything is written in terms of alpha zeros, but it does not need to. This just was a coincidence. So if I were to have here x3, x4, then I would have had the last one as alpha one. Yeah, alpha one. Yeah, but at this moment, we are. Uh, yeah, we are only going. With, so like, I can. The I, I, is I, I, telling I, us. Yeah, mm, the string is telling us that this is the only way to go for it. Mm -hmm. I, I, for instance, okay. I, if if we replace the last three with alpha one, what what's wrong with that? Uh, the last three. So let me. The last three. Yeah, alpha zero tau alpha zero. If I replace it with alpha one, what is wrong with that? So, so you are saying, saying oh, I'm saying tau alpha zero. Uh, can you write tau alpha zero, tau alpha zero, and then alpha one? Yes. Yeah. So the problem is this one that yeah. we have now. We have two words that are going mapping to the same monomial. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not good because we, yeah, like, they both work for surjectivity. For surjectivity. Yeah. Surjectivity is okay. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both fine. But the only thing is, while I'm doing this surjectivity, I'm also trying to find some uniqueness to figure okay. out what makes it injective. So, so for surjectivity, they both work great. Now I have two of them and I don't like it. So I'm like, okay, how can I kind of try to rule out, uh, um, to find the rules that present my my uh, my um, my monomials uniquely by words, so I'm mm -hmm. like trying to restrict like to to res restrict the uh, set of words such that what remains is exactly in bijection with my monomial. Okay, you you are going to be uh, okay. You are making uh, uh, less use of words, expressing I the expression really, ring. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to have only one word. One word to express it. Okay. 
Okay. So that's why I'm saying, okay, you know what? This go to the same one. I'm choosing by convention because it looked like I had a rule already for how I came up with this. This was like looked natural. Once I decided the ordering here in, on the on the variables in the monomial, there is a unique way how to go then from here to here. Got Once it. I made that decision. Got it. Thank then you. I'm like, okay, I'm removing everything else. And uh, yes. And so what I claim now is that uh, in this situation, I take L subset of this, um, the words we have alpha zero, alpha one tau star, uh, such that so L is all uh, words W where um, um, al the, the only condition I, I put here is that alpha, I hope that's the only one, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, so alpha zero, um, sorry, alpha, yeah, alpha uh, one, alpha zero, um, sub, sub, as a substring, sub, it's not accepted. So in other words, like alpha one cannot be followed by an alpha zero. That's what I'm saying here. And I think it should be also another one. So alpha zero tau. Oh yeah. And I claim, but this needs some more, more kind of, um, um, and alpha one, if uh, alpha one must be followed, by uh, tau if it is not at the end of the world. So the reason is um, to not have, yeah, there, uh, again, the reason is to, to have this bijection. So if we, if we allow like, alpha one to be, yeah, so kind of here is one example. So if I have alpha one, alpha one, and I don't have a tau in, the, in between, that means that I have x um, zero, x one, x zero, x one, but then this can be written as x zero, x zero, x one, x one, which is alpha zero, tau alpha zero. So, that means that I cannot have, yeah, so basically if I re rewrite this again, is I cannot have alpha 1, alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 1 next to each other. And once, and every word that does not have this substring, um, like the set of all these words will be in bijection with our monomials. Okay. Uh, either this is only for this particular example, uh, yes. where x not scale x1. Only yes, for this particular thing. Okay. Yeah, these these conditions are for this example. For other examples, you need different uh, new conditions. But, but the claim is that you have a finite set of conditions. Okay. Yeah. So let me write it better because uh, I I was thinking about the yeah yeah so it's like let me say so L here is all the W's in the sigma star such that um. Alpha um, one can only be followed by tau. I know that's it. We want to write it more differently. Yeah. And uh, we can also draw now something. It's going to be start and it's going to be. So we said we start everywhere. We can accept also the empty word so in one. And then we can read anything at the beginning. So we can read um, alpha zero or we can read tau or we can read alpha one. But the only problem is that whenever we read alpha one, we don't stop. 
because we need to follow it by a tau. So we can either follow it by a tau here, or um, uh, we can follow it by another, yeah, by tau here. Um, and but alpha zero can follow it, can fo be followed by alpha zero, and we can even stop here. So two, three. So this is the automata that the read set. So this automata, it's saying that if we read alpha one, then we definitely cannot read alpha zero or alpha one again. So we must read only tau after that. Yeah. So, so that's uh, where, where are we? Yes, so we, we did that and I've put some exercises on that and how to get from this automaton to the rational a form and now I'm gonna introduce the okay so uh, give is, it, <laughs> is it is it something lengthy now we are on time now uh yeah no, no, four no. minutes four minutes three thirty oh okay let me just say one one thing maybe okay. I need to make a statement uh like a theorem for instance so let me write one theorem One theorem is that if you remember the hierarchical model the other day, is that if you take delta to be like the set of one, two, through m, so it's just a set of points, n one, n two, and m, like this, then the equivariant Hilbert series of this ideal S1. SM has this very nice form as one times times SM over one minus S1, one minus S2, one minus SM minus T. Okay. And then yeah, let's take the break. Uh, I think this this result is similar to the one uh, what Uwe Nagel and uh, Tim Romer got for the equivariant Hilbert series for the ink invariant ideal? They, so they did not do this when you have a, a yeah, multiple for this case, yeah. the directions. So they don't have this formula. This formula showed up in the paper uh, with Uwe, me and Uwe. Okay, 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 got it, got it. We do have a generalized version of this. This is this, in fact, is an ex, is a like a special case. There we have a what we call the generalized independence models or the generalized Segre products. Um, but uh, in particular, yeah, in the special case of the Segre product of infinitely of m infinite dimensional planes, you get this formula. So yeah, Romer uh, and considered only when like the ring is of this form so, mm -hmm. and I think in this case here is definitely not that form so the ring here is it's like uh, n oh, n times times n m times <laughs> okay Got it, got it, got the difference. Thank you. Is there any other question? From IBA? No questions. Okay, okay. so if, if there is no question, so let's thank the speaker. Okay, now we have a tea break and we will meet at uh, 4 p.m. again, right? So, Aida, you have to wait. <laughs> yeah. Take, so, take okay. some coffee and stay awake. <laughs> All good. All good. Thank okay. you. It does help that I am a morning person. So <laughs> I should say <laughs> <say, are> you. <laughs> I am glad that there was the option in the morning. Then in the, like when we were discussing at the beginning 